Hey, Orchard Grove family. Here we are at the, the countdown to Christmas. And uh, we're just finishing our series on giving. And um, I hope as you think and reflect um, throughout this series and throughout this season, that if one thing um, we can all get is that this is more than giving, uh, that giving doesn't even really do it justice, but it's, it's about being in the flow of how life actually works and so um, if it feels difficult maybe you haven't quite got there yet maybe we still have a, a ways to go but if it feels like you're stepping into the flow or you're getting in the zone then maybe you're starting to grasp what quote giving really is all about and uh, right before Christmas I wanted to share the story of Mary and I want to read a little bit it's in uh, Luke's gospel and this is, um, to me, when you think about Mary giving her gift, it's, it's symbolic of the gift that you and I are all called to give. And so today I want to talk about how God has a special gift for each and every one of us. And that really our mission, our purpose in life is to give that gift. Give the gift that you were meant to give. And Mary's story goes something like this from Luke's gospel. Um, in the sixth month, uh, that's the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, basically, um, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, an ordinary town um, in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. Her name was Mary. And the angel said to her, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and will give birth to a son. And you will give him the name Jesus. He will be great and we will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And then he goes on to say, for nothing is impossible with God. And then Mary replies, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And the angel left her. I'm the Lord's servant. Let it be. She, Mary basically says, yes, um, I will be a vessel. That's what giving really is. Giving is understanding that you, you just receive and then you give. You are a vessel. It comes to you and then it goes through you. And today I want to just focus on the, the gift that you're called to give. Mary had a very specific and a very special gift. And of course, all of us would recognize that and think, wow, of course, we're celebrating Christmas, the greatest gift ever given. But when you think about it, it wasn't that God gave the gift directly to us, but gave that gift to us through Mary. Get it? God gives his gifts through others. And you and I are called to be the vessels through which God gives his gifts. We just have to say like Mary, yes, I am the Lord's servant. May it be as you have said. So let's talk about your unique gift and what you can give. And the thing that you want to remember is that, first of all, your gift is unique. Nobody else has your gift. I mean, even if you go and take a personality test, or even if you start to learn about your skills and your talents, all of that is fine and good. But maybe you could find your one of 16 personality types or one of 64 personality types or whatever it is, but that doesn't describe you. That can't even come close because someone might have a similar personality type. You have different experiences. You've had different things that have happened to you in life. Think about that. You may be an outgoing person, 
but you've had all kinds of tragedy. You might be an introvert and you've had all kinds of, of uh, education, but it, it doesn't really matter because each one of us brings a unique gift. And you never want to compare your gift with somebody else's gift. No one gift is more important or special than the other. And God, it says in the scriptures, each one of us is fearfully and wonderfully made. Get that, you're wonderful. God knew what he was doing when he made you. And God made you special and made you unique. And so the gift that you're giving is special and unique. Now, I've been telling a lot of Charlie's stories lately, but I, I just have to, I just, I can't refuse. Because lately she's getting into all the Christmas um, stories, right? And she's been loving, I told you about the Grinch. Um, we still watch that daily, but now she's added um, Frosty the Snowman to her repertoire. And um, recently she's loved Rudolph. And, uh, you know, I got to be honest with you, I probably watched all these when I was a kid, but I never really thought about any of them. I just watched them or I sang the songs. And, and of course, Rudolph is a story about a reindeer with a red nose and he doesn't fit in and he can't play in the reindeer games. And uh, he tries to cover up his nose and he's trying to um, hide it or fit in with everyone else. And of course, the story culminates he feels embarrassed and all of that, but it culminates with Santa needing his nose. Uh, it's a it's a foggy, foggy Christmas Eve, right? And Santa needs somebody who has a special gift, a reindeer that is a special gift. And it's a great story, but you know, that's our story. You have something in your life and it could even be something that you try to hide. It could be something that you thought this is a liability, but it's not a liability. Even the bad things, even the difficult things, even the things that you don't like, they're a part of you, they're a part of your story. And God can, and I believe God does, take all of those things, even our pain, um, even our sin, can I say that, our mistakes. I think that's a huge thing that people don't emphasize enough. And God takes all of that and he uses it to make us special. And it becomes a part of our story it becomes a part of our gift. And so don't compare, I always say this, don't compare and don't complain. Do things you don't wanna do. You have a story, you have a life, and it's unique and no one else has one quite like it. So don't worry about what someone else's story is or what someone else's gift is. You ever been going to a party and you're supposed to bring a gift and you're walking in and you see people with packages and you, in your mind you go, oh no, did I get the right kind of gift? Did I get an expensive enough gift? Am I doing, look, God gave his gift to you and it's beautiful and it's amazing. And just like Mary's gift was special, there is no, there, there, there is no one that has the gift um, that you have to give. And this is the second part, which I think is so important. Your gift finds you as much as you find your gift. I know we all want to know what's my gift. You know, we try to, we try to search and we look and, and, and maybe we take tests. I don't think any of those things are bad or wrong. I think we all want to find our gift. But I think one of the things that happens in life is our gift eventually finds us. Just like the angel came to Mary. One day it's going to come to you. Maybe it already has come to you. But don't worry if it hasn't. This is important. People panic too early. It might not come to you. You might be honing it and you don't even know it. You might be developing your gift and you aren't even aware of it. But one day, it's gonna come to you. Just like it came to Mary. This is it, Mary. And you just need to be ready to receive when your time comes. Note this. Mary goes on in her song later and she sings, God, it's amazing that you were mindful of me that you are mindful of me. Who am I that you would think about me? Who am I that you would come and find me and, and remind me or make me aware of this gift? Just know this, God's gonna find you and he's gonna let you know. Be open, be sensitive, be aware. Um, be ready for your angel, your visit. Um, they might not have wings, you know, 
It might be a grumpy person. It could be a wise grandpa. Um, it could be a coworker, a mentor. You just don't know who your angel's gonna be. But be aware and be ready. And your gift is gonna find you. Don't worry about it. In the meantime, keep doing what you're doing. Mary lived a number of years before she had that visitation. What was she doing? Probably just living a normal life in Nazareth. Years ago, I got to visit this, the, the city of Nazareth, and uh, it's bigger than it was back in that day, for sure. Um, but it, as I was driving through, I was just struck. It was just so odd because I, you know, had these ideas about what Nazareth would be like today, and I guess I kind of thought it would be this quaint little village, and, and maybe I'd see an angel or something. And the reality was, as I was driving through that town, I saw kids... Um, uh, getting ready for soccer practice, you know, and I thought, wow, it's just a normal town. Nazareth is so normal. But I think that was the point. It was the point back then. Mary was a normal girl going about her normal routine. And you and I were normal people. And that's okay. Because out of that normal, out of that normal comes something very, very special, unbelievably special. And remember this, the world is waiting for your gift. There's no doubt the world was waiting for Christ. The world was waiting for the Messiah. But I want you to know, the world is waiting for your gift. That's why you're here. That's it. And the whole world waits on your gift, needs your gift. Your gift will bring joy, happiness, lasting fulfillment to all kinds of people in our world and don't don't think small here recognize this god puts you here for a reason the reason isn't to collect a bunch of things the reason uh, isn't just to just to run around and experience a bunch of things all of that is fine has its place but the reason you're here is to give your gift your gift no one can do you nobody I used to always worry about this, you know. When I was young, I always wanted to be like somebody else. And I, even then when I started towards, you know, pastoring, I always thought I had to be like some other pastor. Maybe he had an authoritative voice or maybe it was whatever it was. And I just realized I had to be me. And then I realized I was okay being me. And then I realized no one else could be me. That's when you cross the line. Be you. And recognize the world is waiting for your gift. Do you know Mary, after um, she got the visitation from the angel, she went to her relative Elizabeth, who was pregnant also. And when she got there, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leapt, it says, in her womb for joy. What is your gift to do? Your gift makes other people honestly jump for joy. I mean, that's what it's about, isn't it? Isn't your gift about making other people happy, making them jump for joy, making them love life, making them experience God's goodness? I think that's what it's all about. That's what Mary's gift did. And your gift, I think, will do the same thing. And I know um, sometimes it can be a little, well, I don't know, what's the word, scary, you know? Because you realize, man, I have this gift. It's a sacred thing. Mary was scared. Sometimes people get scared of their own gift. They, they, they're afraid to fully admit it or explore it. Which brings me to the other thing, because, you know, think about Mary having to explain her gift to other people. There's a tough one. And I think that's why we're afraid, you know. Well, how, uh, Mary, how would I explain this to anybody? Um, I'm pregnant, um, but I'm a virgin, but... God told me, an angel came. I mean, all becomes very difficult, right? Hard to explain, hard to share with other people. And you have to think, I mean, she probably was ridiculed for her gift way before she was praised for it. And you have to be ready for that. You have to be willing for that, to know it's okay. Some people will understand and some people won't understand. Some people will misunderstand and then later they will understand. But if you know in here 
This is your gift. And that's where you know, down here. Once you know down here, then you can go ahead. And I'm telling you, um, it can feel risky at times, but you know it's a risk that's worth taking because your gift is unlike anything else. And it, it may be really hard. It may be, people won't understand. I, I remember when I was young, um, you know, it's hard to explain to people. Um, my football coach didn't understand. Honestly, my dad didn't understand. And my dad, uh, man, he was behind me in everything. And then I told him, I think I want to kind of head towards, you know, a Bible school or missionary work or, a you know. And he, he kind of thought, like, I don't know if that's a good idea. You know, maybe you should do something else where you can make some money. And then, you know, and he, I remember when he said to me, he goes, well, what if that doesn't work out? And here's the thing. Um, I mean, of course, you respect your parents and all that. And I did. But, you know, we talked about it. But at the end of the day, um, your gift can be hard to explain to people. But you still have to follow. You still have to persevere. And you don't need to ex help everybody understand it and everybody explain it. Because in time, in time, your gift will be clear. Now... Once you give your gift, and this is so important, your gift never dies. That's why I keep saying when we're doing this whole series on giving, I mean, giving is such a, mm, it's, so, it's the word that we use, but we need better words. We need better, because really what you're doing is you're just letting, letting it flow through you. And, but if you don't give it or you don't let it flow, you die. Right, And we talked about that, I think, at the very first message in the series. You can go back and look at them if you haven't seen it. But once you give your gift, it never dies. Jesus said it this way, John 12, verses 23 and 24. Um, if you look them up at some point, Jesus says, you know, a seed that's not planted remains a single seed. Right? But if it goes into the ground, if it dies that's when it lives. If it dies and it's buried, then it lives. The only way is to let it go or to give it or to sow it, to put it in the ground. But once you give your gift, it's like putting that seed in the ground. It lives forever. That seed will turn into a tree. I mean, just look at these massive trees back here and they start with seeds like this. It's unbelievable. Giving your gift multiplies it. It starts um, a wave, a ripple, a, a cascade, a chain reaction. Just think about this. Let's start stupidly small. You smile at somebody. I mean, honestly, when someone smiles at you, you tend to want to smile back. And it sort of makes you a little bit happy. Weird, right? A smile can make you feel good in here. And if you feel good in here, your tendency is you might want to treat somebody else a little bit better or with a little more grace or generosity. It creates a chain reaction. It's true in the negative as well, right? Somebody cuts you off, somebody flips you off, somebody, and, and all of a sudden you feel something in here, right? And you then tend to seize up and, and tense up and maybe you, you start another chain reaction. So what you can do when you give your gift, however small, you start a chain reaction and it doesn't stop. Maybe you smile at somebody, they get in a good mood, they smile at five other people and those five people smile at 25 other people. And just like that, you've literally changed the energy, the atmosphere around you. Maybe they go home and they treat their kids better. Maybe they spend more time with them. Maybe they're softer and kinder to their husband or their wife, on and on and on. When you give your gift, that gift never dies. It just keeps going and going and going. What an amazing thing. Now, giving your gift, and we'll start to close this, I want you to know will be the greatest satisfaction of your life. No, there's no question about it. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you, if we could interview Mary, uh, you know, maybe playing cards with the neighbors. She was 
I don't think so. You know, maybe she joined the ladies' soccer league. I don't think anyone could say there was any greater satisfaction than giving that gift to the world. As painful, not just the childbirth, by the way. For Mary, it wasn't just a childbirth. Mary, like every mother, had to let her son go. Let him go, literally. She had to let him go do his thing. She had to let him go pursue his calling. Then she had to, she had to let him die. All of these things were painful, but nothing could be more satisfying than giving that gift. The other night, um, I was walking in and, and uh, Vicky was watching some movie and she was falling asleep to it. And I think she had already fallen asleep. And it was some weird movie or show or something on Netflix. And I thought, this is really, this is really stupid. So I went to grab the remote and I was going to change the channel. And I just paused just for a minute. I think, what, what in the world? And it was about an octopus. And I thought, this is so ridiculous. So I sat there for a couple of minutes. And next thing you know, I'm hooked and I'm watching this show. And if some of you have seen it, you will know what I'm talking about. I think it's called My Octopus Teacher. And it's a story of this guy, and I think he spends a year of his life every day going into a specific part um, off the shore into the ocean and spending time with this octopus and just getting to know the environment, the underwater environment. And he develops, uh, how else do you say, I guess, a, a friendship with this octopus. And the octopus loses one of his arms and he, he helps him and he nurses him back and, and, and watches and the arm grows back and on and on this story goes and you find yourself getting sucked into the story. And um, he averts sharks and danger. And <laughs> at the end of the story, you follow the drama of this octopus and then you learn at the very end this octopus is going to give birth and that this octopus has to save all of its energy and then give all of its energy to give birth to another octopus and sure enough it does and in giving birth the octopus gives the last bit of energy that it has and now the octopus is subject to any predator and eventually this shark comes, takes away the octopus and eats it. In, in giving birth, that octopus was giving its life. And yet, I guess probably like Mary, maybe that was her gift to give. And I don't know, maybe there is no greater satisfaction Yes, there's pain. Yes, there's struggle. But that's the greatest thing you can do with your life is to give. I want to show you a little video. And I think you'll start to catch on right away.
I mean, it all, it all speaks for itself. But when you watch that video, the one thing you don't do is you don't question the grandpa. You don't say, well, why would he do that? Why would he put that much work in? Why? It, it's, it's all there. You get it. And when you get the flow of life, there is no giving. There is no sacrifice anymore. You just get it. It's just, you know. There's no questioning grandpa's effort. There's no questioning his sacrifice. You know what it's for. It's clear and it's obvious. And I think when we really get it, um, there's no sacrifice in giving anymore. It's just you know what to do and you go about and you do it. And as you begin to understand your gift, just like Mary started to understand her gift, once you get it, you freely give. Freely you've received, freely you give. Your gift was not your idea. Your gift was God's idea, just like Mary's gift. But your gift, your gift, just like Mary's gift, is a gift to the world. And the world is waiting. Just like the world waited for Mary's gift, the world's waiting for yours. And at just the right time, you'll know it'll come to you. You need to give that gift and let the world in on what God has given you. God bless you as we celebrate Christmas this year. Let's say a prayer together. Our Lord, we pause to say thank you. Thank you for the gift that you gave us. But we also want to recognize Mary, who, who was the vessel, who said yes, who said yes. So you gave your gift through her. And now there's so many gifts that you want to give to our world, but you want to give them through us. And so God, make us willing vessels just as we open our hearts to receive your gift this Christmas, the gift of Christ, the gift of, of life. God, we want to be willing vessels that you can give your gift through us. Help us to be open. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. God bless you, Orchard Grove. Merry Christmas. We'll see you soon for our Christmas celebrations.